Greetings tonight. Here we find ourselves at the end of another book of the Bible, the book of Romans, final chapter tonight. Uh, as it is, uh, going back to uh, the book of 2 Samuel, and Samuel is gone, uh, but the second book takes his name, uh, that David uh, still has a conflict going with Saul's uh, son, but as it was, two of the servants of uh, Saul's son kill him. Abner got killed by Joab in yesterday's reading, and today uh, Isbosheth gets murdered, and the uh, two men bring the head of him to David, and David said, as the Lord lives, the man who brought me news that King Saul had died thought he was bringing me good news, but he brought his own death. He says, how much more you two men who murdered an innocent man will be put to death by your own words. And he had them slain for killing Saul's son. Now, Mephibosheth, it, it talked about him. And Mephibosheth is going to be introduced to David, I believe, probably tomorrow. But he uh, was the son of Jonathan, who was David's best friend in the whole world, BFF. And His nurse mate, he was like five years old when uh, word came that Saul had died and his nurse mate grabbed him and took off running and she fell and his legs got broken and he had been lame ever since that time. And so David is going to show him uncommon favor because of his father, Jonathan. And David said that he would do that to Jonathan, and he did show favor to Jonathan's household. And uh, we'll, we'll see more of that tomorrow. But today, uh, in the 16th chapter, there's a lot of greetings. And uh, greetings go uh, from many people, and David is telling about who they should be honoring among those who are with him, and I believe it was at Corinth, uh, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and some of these names we've seen several times, like uh, uh, Phoebe and uh, Aquila and Priscilla. Uh, they both were uh, fellow workers with Paul, tent makers together. And so Paul had uh, a long background with many of these. But uh, there are words of admonition for us even today. Uh, and so In verse 16, it says, greet one another with a holy kiss. So next time you see me, greet me with a holy kiss, okay? <laughs> and uh, the church of Christ greets you. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. If these troublemakers slip into your midst, just avoid them. Uh, don't waste your time on them. Keep your focus on the main focus. People try to sidetrack us and take us on a rabbit trail. Uh, we can take up all sorts of causes, but the cause that we are to take up is the cause of Christ 
in saving souls. These people come in to try to get us off track and keep us from reaching people with the love of the Lord. Let's keep that our main purpose. So they cause offenses and, and teach doctrine that's contrary to the doctrine that they've learned, so it says avoid them. Uh, for those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. It means you're not taking part in it. Okay? And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And then Timothy, who, if you know Timothy, had been with Paul for quite a while, and he showed up in the book of Acts, and he traveled with Paul on a lot of the missionary journeys. Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius and Jason and Shostafer, my countrymen, greet you. And I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, he was a scribe, greet you in the Lord. So Paul wrote verbally. He orally dictated in uh, Tertius, uh, wrote it. Then Gaius, my host, and the host of the whole church greets you. Narestus, the treasure of the city. It's always nice to be friends with the treasure of the city. They greet you. And Corinthus, a brother, greets you also. So we've got a lot of greetings for some people that are there in heaven waiting to meet us. That were there in Corinth. And... Uh, They've greeted a whole lot of people. Uh, now, here's the final admonition. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel in the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which is Christ in us, kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest by the prophetic scriptures, which have been revealed about how Christ would come, Christ would die for us as the sacrifice for us. They've been revealed. The scales have fallen off of our eyes like Paul uh, in the book of Acts, the scales fell off and then he could see, right? We can see the scriptures, over 500 scriptures, prophetic scriptures about Jesus coming. There's only one man who ever lived on the face of the earth that could have fulfilled all 500 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. One man, and that was Jesus himself. Uh, and so... Those prophetic scriptures, the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest by the prophetic scriptures, has been made known to all nations, including us, according to the co commandment of the everlasting God. God commanded this to go out. For the obedience to faith. Obedience to faith. And because of our obedience to Him, He's given us faith in Him. He gave us faith first that brought the obedience. But that obedience brings faith that we now will have everlasting life with Him, being called children of God and born into an eternal 
a kingdom, a kingdom that has no end. Children of that kingdom and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So there's a whole lot that we've learned out of the book of Romans. It says, to God alone, wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. I'm so thankful that Paul has penned this letter. I know we could study this for a millennium and continue to dig riches from this. Uh, the next book in the Bible is Corinthians. Speaking of Corinth, where Paul had penned this from, Paul is going to Corinth to minister the, to, to the Corinthians. And he did that in the book of Acts, but here's a letter that he sent to them, and uh, they had issues. Uh, we don't, though, do we? <laughs> so, uh, letters of admonition and correction and some rebuking, and but the rebuking brought correction, and that's a good thing. When people see the error of their way, and they turn away, they repent from their error, and turn to the Lord, and uh, eternal life is uh, what we get from obedience to the Lord. Obey the Lord, and the only thing he asks for us to obey is put our faith and trust in him. In his finished work, on the cross of Calvary. He finished everything. He gives us faith to believe as a gift. All we have to do is <laughs> say it. We have to say it and let that uh, well up in our hearts. He's given us the belief that God raised Jesus from the dead. He is allowed us to see God at work. I mean, and I was just relating to somebody. If you had not seen God at work, uh, just pray that the Lord would open your eyes. I mean, sometimes we get into uh, spiritual funks. We'll get into uh, maybe some even depression. And uh, that's something that uh, I had posted a video yesterday about a woman who was in severe depression that actually planned her own suicide and uh, how God had delivered her. So if you look at yesterday's Facebook post, there is a YouTube link. And I would challenge everybody to watch that video because it's powerful. It makes me cry to think that how God works and and amazing ways I mean for me when I came to this table which is where I have my Bible study every night practically and I have this table is covered with Bibles and books and I come here to study and when I arrived at the table yesterday the Bible app in my pocket started preaching God's Word to me the very moment I stepped in front of this table and I turned and walked away from the table and it stopped and I said to Darlene did you hear my Bible start uh, preaching God's Word uh, reading God's Word to me as soon as I arrived at the table and she said yes you know uh, and so I turned around and came back to the table. As soon as I got back to the table, the Bible app started reading the Bible again. It's like, oh my goodness. This is amazingly crazy. <laughs> I have kind of a crazy life like that. It just like gives me great joy that such randomness is not random at all. Uh, is uh, just what a blessing so today at work I decided that I was going to share this with a co-worker that 
is from Jamaica, and he shared a video with me of this Jamaican guy. He was actually humming a tune, and I asked him what he was humming, and he told me, you know, it was a song from this Jamaican guy, and he sent me, I, I told him, well, send me the link, I'd like to listen to that, thinking, this is going to not be uh, very filling for me, but I'll be cordial with my friend, and as it was, it was Christian Jamaican music. <laughs> Not that this man did all, he, there were 200 songs, and some, the first one that I pulled up uh, had a scantily clad woman in the video, and I was like quickly turned away from that video and uh, got on to the one that he had sent me, and it was all about uh, repentance, and uh, every song had a biblical uh, purpose. And that was really cool, and uh, and it was just a point in our turning our life to the Lord, uh, and so uh, as I shared with him today about that Bible uh, coming on all by itself when I got to the table last night, uh, he started showing me all the radio stations that he listened to and the Bible teaching that he listened to on these radio stations. And I felt like sharing with him the one radio station in California that I listened to, but I didn't share that with him because I felt like I needed to get back to my desk. But I shared the same story about the Bible coming on uh, in my living room with my boss before I got back to my desk and uh, when I got back to my desk uh, a song started playing I mean right when I got to my desk a song started playing uh, on my phone that was on the radio station that I didn't tell my coworker about. That radio station's app on my phone started playing when I got back to my desk all by itself. And the song that it started playing was a song by a group called The Cry, Take My Hand and Walk. And that song was very near and dear to my heart. The the guy who discipled me in Southern California had given me that album. And that was my very favorite song on that album. And that song started playing when I got back to my desk. After telling these guys about my phone playing the Bible, now it's playing a song that's blessing me at my desk. And who's pushing the buttons is all I want to know. <laughs> So, uh, I think the Lord just showed me, uh, he is in control and I'm along for the ride. <laughs> and, uh, he told me to, uh, to fly for him one time and, and, uh, and I'm doing it. I'm, I'm letting him blow me wherever he wants to. And I'm just going to let the Spirit lead and know that this is an exciting time in my life, an exciting time for my family, and I am looking forward to the way that we can be a blessing and, uh, and that we will be blessed of the Lord for that. <laughs> you can't bless people without being blessed five times more yourself and my life is a sacrifice for the Lord now that's it I'm living for him uh, and want to do that wholeheartedly and so I hope that's what you want to do too I'm praying that for you that was our Romans 12 1 verse 
I'm say it one more time. All right. I urge you, therefore, brothers, uh, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's awesome. <laughs> so I hope that you're doing that, okay? So God bless you. You have a wonderful night. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. The Book of Corinthians. Good night.